fine. <laughs> we have two here. Both puff headers. Bitis aretans aretans. Probably the most common dangerously venomous snake in Africa and responsible for more bites and possibly deaths than any other snake on this continent simply because they occur in basically almost every country in Africa. There they, they seem to be calming down a bit now. Now two things you'll notice. One is the one is a bit more brightly colored than the other one. The other one, the other thing is that the one is slightly larger than the other one. Now, this has no bearing on what I'm about to tell you next. But what I am about to tell you is that they are a male and a female. And there's a possibility that the female is gravid. That is the word that we use for these types of creatures for being pregnant. Now, this larger one here is the female. I'm going to try and get them together so that the, the recognizable part of them that distinguishes them physiologically as male and female is more or less together, which is fairly difficult. Now, if you look at the back end, I'll try to focus on the back end where the tails are. If you look at the back end of these snakes, where the tail is, you may be able to see that this one this side has a longish tail and this one this side has a very short stubby tail. And where the tail ends at the cloaca, that is the part of the snake where either eggs are laid or babies are born and where it excretes from, you will notice this female, this larger one here, is very distinctively widened as from the cloaca away from the tail. Where the puff adder, it's a bit more gradual the way the snake thickens into its body. Now there's a good reason for this. Adders, especially gaboon vipers and these puff adders, are of the few snakes in Africa that give live birth. Now just like humans, human females, the females have to be constructed to be able to bear the young. And just like human females have a wider hip girdle than a, than a male, so the female puff adder and the female gaboon viper will also have a wider equivalent than the male in order to bear the young. So there you can see it widens quite significantly. Now, these snakes, unusually enough, are not striking very much. Normally the puff adder is a very cantankerous, very irritable and extremely aggressive snake. And I'm surprised they haven't struck at all. That could be because of the time of year. It's quite cool relative to other times of year. It's the middle of the, the dry season and it's very cold particularly cold in the mornings and fairly cool in the evenings so they're not very active and therefore snakes that don't get enough heat energy they don't uh, generally have too much of a high metabolism and they don't have much energy but here you can see now nicely how these snakes have calmed down not sure if I can show you this again female the back end and male the back end a comparatively longer tail, even though the snake is a shorter snake than this female. Having said that, that is not the normal scientific way to tell male from female. The normal scientific way would be with a probe in the cloaca. Because snake sex organs are designed so that the male fits into the female like a key and a lock, and which is probably generally why you don't get snakes into breeding because this species will only be able to lock into the same species but of the opposite gender. Now, that's an interesting thing. Butterfly landed on the snake. 
So, snakes then are equipped with what we call a hemipenis. It's a double penis. Uh, nobody really knows why, but that's why they, they, they function. The one penis then functions like a key into the female, and so they mate. It's like a lock. And it'll be different for each species. So one species generally cannot mate with a different species. Two very interesting snakes. And these two are quite comfortable together. Instinctively the one will know that the other one is of the opposite gender. One more point in the Bemba language, this is generally known as Ifwafwa. The puff adder is generally called the puff adder because its warning sound is rather than like a hiss, it's a puffing sound. It makes a, an exceptional blowing noise like a bellows. Puff adders prefer warm-blooded prey, so they prey mainly on rodents and things. They have been known to eat other snakes but they, generally speaking, will not take cold-blooded prey such as frogs and other amphibians.